This is the second video on how to use Camtasia to make online lectures. If you haven't watched the first video, go watch that because this builds on those basics. So in this video, we're going to explore some of the options over here and the way that you adjust properties because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And we're going to start with cursor effects, which essentially allow you to highlight your cursor or do other things to make it easier for people to see you clicking on stuff. So let's come over to Google and we're going to start a recording. I'm going to actually turn off uh, myself talking in the video we're making, so I'll just have the system audio and then we're going to record the full screen. It gives me the countdown as normal and then when I'm on the page I can type in a search and maybe click I'm feeling lucky, go to the first page um, and let's click on nutrition. That's just so we get a couple clicks in there. Okay, so we're going to stop that recording and now what we want to do is use those cursor effects on this video. So for any effects that you use in Camtasia, you basically are going to pick the effect from the options that are shown here and you drag it onto your video in the timeline. So here, let's start with highlight. That just has a little yellow ball that follows your cursor around so it's easier to see. We just drag that down onto our timeline. You can see it's highlighted green and then we drop it there and let go. We can see it says added cursor effects. And so now if we play the video, you can see that uh, when my mouse is moving around, we have that yellow ball following where it goes. So that's pretty cool. It definitely makes it easier to see where the cursor is. Um, there's some other effects that we can add in here. So cursor smoothing essentially makes your cursor go in more of a straight line instead of wandering around the screen. So let's drag the playhead back to the beginning and then I'm going to drag and drop cursor smoothing on there. And now if we watch it again, you'll see that I look like a much more competent mouse user because my mouse always moves in straight lines uh, basically from where it was to the thing I click on instead of moving around the screen. The difference actually looks pretty subtle and it doesn't look unnatural in the video, but it makes it a lot easier for people to follow what's going on. And then finally, we can drag on magnify as an example. Again, pull our playhead back to the beginning. And you can see what it's doing here when the mouse is moving is that it's showing what's under the mouse a little bit bigger. That actually ends up being sort of distracting in this case um, because it takes us out of the context of the page. So if I were to change my mind and say I want to delete that, I can click this little arrow at the bottom that shows the effects and cursor magnify is here. I can right click on that and do remove effect. If I want to see more about this, I can right click on say cursor smoothing and do show properties. And this is something we're going to do with a lot of effects. That brings up a little menu over here that shows us some details of what's going on. So those all look like pretty standard things we might not want to change. Let's try the same for cursor highlight. Uh, once we have the properties pulled up, that's come over here. So we can do things like adjust the size or the color. So maybe we want to highlight in green instead of yellow. Now you can see that has updated in the preview. We might want to make it bigger or smaller. And you can try sliding all these options around and see what you like best. So properties over here on the side gives you a lot of control over what's going on. Okay, there are also visual effects that you can add in. So let's look at that menu item over here on the left. Um, a lot of these are for kind of stylization, not things that you would use in a lecture, though they're pretty cool. Um, the one thing that I do use sometimes is clip speed. I wouldn't necessarily use it for something like this, uh, but sometimes there's a process that I'm going through and it doesn't really matter. Like I want the middle part to be there, uh, but I don't need someone to sit through the whole thing and so I may want to speed it up. So clip speed allows you to do that. You can drag that down here. Um, and again, since we have the properties up, we can just click on clip speed and it gives us some of the options. So right now, if I play this video, it's playing at one times speed. Maybe that's really boring and I want it to play at three times speed. Now you can see the video has shortened because since it's faster, it takes fewer seconds. 
And now if I play it, I look like I'm moving quite quickly. So that's the one visual effect that I find can be useful for certain parts um, of a video lecture. Okay, so let's look at a few other things that we have available. Uh, under library, there's a lot of different options here. Uh, I don't necessarily use all of these, but the intros are, I think, an interesting thing that's worth mentioning. So uh, these are little intros to your videos. If we do this one as an example, fading squares, if you double click that, it'll show you a preview. So that can be a nice kind of corporate video way to add a little header on to what you're doing. So let's put one of those on our video. Let's drag this down onto the timeline. This isn't an effect, it's basically an extra video that we're adding. So I'm going to put it on its own track to start with. It comes up by default as a, close to 12 seconds, which is a really long time for little like title cards and stuff. Anything over four or five seconds gets long. So let's make that four. And if we look at the properties, you can see that we can adjust the title and the subtitle. So we could say making Camtasia videos and then the subtitle will be lesson two. Now we have that at the same time as our actual recording. So I'm going to click on our recording and move it along here so it bumps up at the end. Now if we start at the beginning and play, we get that little title card. It's a little fast for that animation, so I may want to make it longer, and then our regular video. So let's give that a couple more seconds, since there's a lot of visual effects, and take another look. Okay, so that feels pretty good, and then we have our regular video. So it's worth exploring the things that are in the library there. Uh, annotations are something that I use quite a bit. Um, these allow you to add text, images, all kinds of stuff on uh, onto the video. So we can see we have a few options here, but let's just leave it on basic. The things that I tend to add most are text and arrows. So let's do some text. So maybe we want to put a little label on this video here. So we can go ahead and just drag that onto the screen. It's going to overlap our actual video and you can see that it has appeared on the timeline down here. We have our properties on the side so let's make the font color black so we can actually see what's happening. And then we can just click here to edit that text. We can adjust the size and such over here. Make sure you have that selected right. position that however we want, and we can adjust how long it appears on the screen, again, by just adjusting it on the timeline down here. So if we make that really short, let's go back. So we're going to see the end of our, uh, let's try that one more time, the end of our little call-in, and then that brief annotation flashes up there. Playing it over and over gives you a sense of how long those things should be. Uh, so any annotation that you want to add, so let's just look at some other ones that are here. Uh, maybe we want to add this cool arrow. You just drag them onto the video where you want them to appear, adjust the size, adjust the properties over here, and you adjust how long it appears by dragging it on the timeline. So those are annotations, especially for like adding little stars, callouts, or text. Um, those are really useful and nice, and they can make it easier to call out stuff that may not be super obvious if you're just recording your screen. Okay, uh, so that's most of what I use. There are transitions which are just like you probably are familiar with in PowerPoint. I tend not to use those. I find them a little bit distracting, but it depends on the kind of video that you're creating. Um, I do a lot of programming videos, and so the last thing anybody needs with that um, is a checkerboard transition. So there you go. Those are some fundamentals of 
uh, the options that you have on the side here. Obviously, this is a very sophisticated program that does a bunch more, uh, but that's most of the stuff that I end up using between the video and cursor effects and the annotations. Um, I don't use a lot more than that in my standard lecture videos.